Good morning. Welcome. We ask that everyone please keep their mask over their mouth and nose through the entire mass. And uh, please maintain distancing when coming up for communion. Please make sure your electronic devices are silenced at this time. Father John will be celebrating our Eucharist. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace, the peace of God our Father, and His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Good morning. As we gather today and listen to our readings from sacred scripture, we find Jesus reminding us to stay awake, to be prepared for we never know the moment that he's going to come for us. We have a tendency to procrastinate, to put off, to think, oh, there's plenty of time. But the moment is now, because all we have is the present moment. And in this present moment, Jesus calls us to be as loving, as forgiving, as merciful as he is. For the times that we've not lived as Jesus would have us live, we now ask forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the wisdom that we seek. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you desire to lead us to life everlasting. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. 
Your wisdom, O God, bids us to keep watch, for she is surely found by those who seek her. And your son warns us to keep awake for the bridegroom's return. Because we know not the day nor the hour, keep us ready as history's vigil unfolds. Let the light we are given at baptism shine bright, your church resplendent with justice and love. Then shall we be among those known by name and called to enter the wedding feast of Jesus the Christ, who was, who is, and who is to come, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Resplendent and unfading is wisdom, and she is readily perceived by those who love her and found by those who seek her. She hastens to make herself known in anticipation of their desire. Whoever watches for her at dawn shall not be disappointed, for he shall find her sitting by his gate. For taking thought of wisdom, is the perfection of prudence, and whoever for her sake keeps vigil shall quickly be free from care, because she makes her own rounds, seeking those worthy of her, and graciously appears to them in the ways, and meets them with all solicitude. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, about those who have fallen asleep, so that you may not grieve like the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose, so too will God, through Jesus, bring with him those who have fallen asleep. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones, when taking their lamps, bought no oil with them, but the wise bought flasks of oil with their lamps. Since the bridegroom was long delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight there was a cry, Behold the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins got up, trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones, said to the wise, give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise ones replied, no, for there may not be enough for us and for you. Go instead to the merchants and buy some for yourselves. And they went off to buy it. The bridegroom came, and those who were ready went into the wedding feast with him. Then the door was locked. Afterwards, the other virgins came and said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he said in reply, Amen, I say to you, I do not know you. Therefore, stay awake, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Once there was a farmer who was looking for some help on the farm. He wanted to hire a farmhand. And he interviewed several, and this one young man came. And the farmer said to him, what qualifications do you have for being a farmhand? And the young man looked at him and said, I can sleep when the wind blows. The farmer thought, that's sort of a strange response. But there was something about the young man that the farmer liked, so he decided to give him a chance. Sometime later, there was a very violent storm in the middle of the night. The farmer and his wife were practically thrown out of bed with the shaking of the house and the wind and the lightning and all the rest of it. And they got up and they went running around. They wanted to make sure everything was secure. And when they went, they found that all the shutters 
were perfectly secured. They found that there was wood stacked by the fireplace. When they looked out, they saw the barn doors were closed and locked and everything was secure. Then the farmer realized what the young man was saying. I can sleep while the wind blows because he knew he would be prepared for anything. Mm. Be prepared. That seems to be the point that Jesus is making in our gospel today. Be prepared. For we never know when we're going to be called home. We never know when that great wedding feast, he describes heaven as a wedding feast so many places, is going to be open because the bridegroom is coming. See, the concept of a wedding in the time of Jesus was exactly the opposite of the focus that we have on a wedding today. Because in Jesus' time, the couple would get engaged and that was the legal contract. I mean, for all practical purposes, they were married except that they weren't living together. And the bridegroom would go off for a year or so after the engagement to prepare a home for the bride. And when it was time, when he was ready, he would come and pick up the bride and take her to the home. That was the beginning of the feast. And he was always accompanied when he came with bridesmaids or groomsmaids, we would call them, because he was the one that was the main focus of the wedding. Now, I mean, it is so shifted today. It's here comes the bride and everything is geared toward the bride. It was just the opposite then. And it was a big thing. But it was also sort of a game because the bridegroom would decide when he was going to come and no one exactly knew it and they would always be guessing and be ready, you know. So that's what happened with these ten women. Five of them thought, well, maybe he's going to be a little bit later than he should be. And they brought an extra flask of oil with them, where the others just came with their lights. And when I look at the scripture, I sometimes think, weren't they selfish? The ones that brought the extra jar of oil with them? Couldn't they have given a little bit to the others? It almost seems like they were not very uh, kind. Go off to the store yourself. Go get it. I have, I have to have mine. You go get yours. Why didn't they share? Why didn't they share? Jesus has to have a point, because he has a point to every story, every parable he told. And I think that's the point, that you have to have your own. Nobody can give it to you. So if we translate that into faith, you have to have your own faith. Nobody can give it to you. When you stand before God in judgment, you're not going to be able to say, well, she did that and he did that, and that group did the other thing. No, God's not interested in what anybody else did. He's only interested in what I did. That's what he's going to judge not somebody else, me. And when I stand before God and any one of us stands before God, we're responsible only for our actions. We're responsible only for the way that we have lived our faith, that we have proclaimed Christ in our life, that we have lived as Jesus would have us live, with lamps burning brightly always. Always. We have to learn to live in the present moment. Because you see, it's in this moment that Christ could come. And we have to be ready, no matter what. So 
So it means we have to learn to pray now. Not say, oh, I'll pray someday, I'll get into the habit of prayer. No, we've got to learn to do it now. We've got to learn to love now, not someday in the future. We've got to learn to forgive now, this moment. Not say, oh, I'll forgive them eventually. No, we have to do it now. Now. We have to stand for what's right and just and holy. Not someday down the line, but now. It's all in the present moment. Because God is the present moment. He is the present moment. And we have to be prepared. Because the bridegroom is going to come. We don't know when. We don't know how. But he is going to come. There was an Arctic explorer, his name was Shackleton, back in the early 1900s. And in 1912, he took a, his crew, and they were up in the Arctic, and they were exploring. And he left half of the men on an island while he went off someplace else with the other half in their explorations. But a terrible, terrible ice storm had come up, and all the waters were frozen over, and he couldn't get back to the island to pick up these crew members. And he had to wait until conditions got better to come and get them. And finally, the day that his ship pulled in to the, to the harbor where the half of the crew had been stranded, he found them all there at the edge of the land, ready to get right on the boat and leave. And when they got on the boat, he said to the commander of that group that were left there. How did you know I was coming today that you're all ready and you're all here on the shore and you have all your stuff packed up? And the commander said, we didn't know when you were coming. But he says, every morning since you left, I would get up, roll up my bedroll, gather all of my possessions together so that I would be ready to leave. And then I commanded all of the other men to do the same. Every day, they packed up and were ready. And they were there 22 months before they were finally picked up. Be ready. Can you sleep when the wind blows? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in our God, whose kindness is a greater good than life, let us bring our prayers before the Lord. May all who believe in the resurrection of the body 
join to nurture the human dignity of all destined for such, for such glory. We pray to the Lord. May world leaders seek wisdom, resplendent and unfading, to guide their decisions and policies, making their nations and the world more just, more virtuous, and more peaceful. We pray to the Lord. May the sick receive the oil of healing, the sad receive the oil of gladness, and the poor receive the oil of plenty. We pray to the Lord. Lord, May all gathered here actively await Christ's coming in glory by serving Christ in each other. We pray to the Lord. Lord, May we not grieve over our departed as those who have no hope, but temper our mourning with faith that through Jesus they will rise again. We pray to the Lord. May God, may God grant these needs which we hold in our hearts. For these needs, and for Helen Pacana, Diane Campino Di Pietro, Joey Quaitier, Clifton Farrow, Kathy Sims, Mary Serrato, Lou Ann Malika, Dorothy Lacava, Harold Kelly, Robert Kerwin, Walt Zuba, John Castalucia, Dorothy Darcy, John Pepino, Dorothy and Michael Tabasco, Paul Desmond, Victoria de la Toire, Miguel Castro, and all the people of the parish, we pray to the Lord. Lord Almighty God, your divine Son will return at the end of time in the fullness of his glory. Be with us during our time of waiting for his return and keep us ready and alert to be received into that glory. We pray in his name. Amen. Let us now pray that our sacrifice be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion. We pray through the same Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. 
Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For it is with love that we celebrate his death. With living faith, we proclaim his resurrection. With unwavering hope, we await his returning glory. And so with all the choirs of angels and saints, we proclaim your glory as we join in their unending hymn of praise. be glorified, O God, who love the human race, and to always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when it's once for his disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask you to send forth the power of your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine. Let them become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of his last supper, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke the bread, gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, will be poured out for you, for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. We offer you the bread of life, the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the offering of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that through the power of your spirit of love, we may be included now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, we ask you to renew your church, which is here in Freehold, by the light of the gospel. Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people. Together with Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, all bishops, priests, and deacons, the entire people you have made your own, that in a world that's torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face. In the resurrection, grant them the fullness of life. 
Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her husband, with the apostles, the martyrs, and with all the saints, may we praise you and give you glory through Jesus Christ, your Son. For it is through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us now pray for the coming of God's kingdom, as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, where the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not at our sin, but on the faith of your people, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord Jesus be with each one of you. Amen. Thank you. Now share with one another that peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
For those at home that are unable to join with us physically this morning to receive Eucharist, remember that you've been fed with the real presence of Christ as you heard the scripture. Christ is in you by virtue of your baptism. And our prayer should always be to remember that presence of Christ in us and the fact that we are all called to be living Eucharist. We are called to be living Eucharist, to carry the presence of Jesus to everyone we meet. So we pray an act of spiritual communion. And we just ask that our hearts grow in his love. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, flow over me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O oh, good Jesus, hear me. Hide me within your wounds. Never let me be separated from you. Protect me from the evil one. And call me at the hour of my death. Bid me come close to you so that with all your saints I may praise you forever in the glory of heaven. Amen. Let us pray. Nourished by this sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and we beseech your mercy, that by the pouring forth of your spirit the grace of integrity may endure, in those your heavenly power has entered. And we pray through Christ our Lord. We have the following announcements for the week. We have added an 8.30 a.m. Mass on Sunday, right now for just the month of November. We need lectors for the Mass. We will cancel the extra 8.30 Mass if we do not have enough volunteers or if there is a lack of attendance. Additionally, we need ushers for the Saturday 4 p.m. and Sunday 7 a.m. Masses and lectors for the Sunday 12 noon Mass. Please see today's bulletin for more information. The St. Vincent de Paul Society is sponsoring the annual Giving Tree this year. One tree is in the main entrance of the church and the other is in the parish office. See today's bulletin for more information. The Knights of Columbus are collecting donations 
to send a soldier home for the holidays after all the masses this weekend. Please be generous. The Lord be with you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he let his face shine upon you. May he be gracious to you. May he fill you with healing in mind, in body, and in spirit. May he grant you peace. May he give you every blessing now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace and let your light shine before everyone you meet. Have a wonderful week, be safe, and don't forget to wear your mask. We have a very special piece that Janos is going to be playing for us today, so I do invite you to just sit and listen to the piece. It's very beautiful and very intricate.